This is the Sabbath School lesson for the fourth quarter, 2020. Lesson 8 for November 14 to 20, Education and Redemption, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Thursday, November 19, Education in the Early Church. One of the remarkable principles of education in Scripture emerges as Jesus, the master teacher, prepares to leave his students or disciples. They had been with him for three and a half years, approximately the amount of time we allocate to a high school or college education. At the completion of either period, depending upon the person, students are often considered ready to manage on their own. But Jesus knew better, and so he provided his followers with ongoing or continuing education under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit. Elsewhere, that teacher or guide is identified as comforter or advocate, in Greek parakletos, who will be given to the followers of Jesus permanently, as we read in John 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. He is identified as the Spirit of truth. While the Holy Spirit is not identified as an educator, the work of the Spirit certainly is educational, particularly as it pertains to seeking and finding the truth. Question, read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. What is Paul saying that is so important in the context of education? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God." However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory." But, as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor hath entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man, except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ." Paul begins by reminding the church in Corinth that when he first came to them, he spoke of nothing but Jesus Christ and his crucifixion in verse 2. No clever wisdom, only the gospel proclamation. But that was not the end of it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, because once these new Christians matured, the apostle would be back to teach them wisdom, the things God hid before the world began, as we saw in verse 7, even the deep things of God we saw in verse 10. All will be studied under the guidance of the Spirit of God as he joins with the Spirit of the learner. 
How deep will that study be? And how much learning will be open to those who are led by the Spirit? The chapter concludes with a quotation from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 40 verse 13. Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counsellor has taught him? The prophet speaking to ordinary people of his day would say that no one can do that. But Paul corrected that perception by concluding, we have the mind of Christ, meaning that spirit-filled Christians have access even to the mind of God, and thus to any amount of learning and understanding, as we read in 1 Corinthians 2, 10-13, that would be needed to know the path of righteousness.